You know, I have such wonderful childhood memories of driving around at Christmas time with my family and looking at Christmas lights. Christmas decorations are something that are a wonderful addition to a home this time of year, something that bring joy to you and to your neighbors, something that helps get you in the Christmas spirit. And they can also be something that help you remember the true meaning of Christmas. And so this year, I wanted to make a Christmas star for my family and our home. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a Christmas star. For this project, I want to use pallet wood for my star for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's cheap. I got these pallets for free. Somebody gave them away on Facebook Marketplace and all I had to do was go pick them up. And so I got several and I've used them for a lot of different projects. They're a handy thing to have. But in order to use this wood, I'm going to have to separate the boards from the pallet. So I'm using a crowbar to make that separation. And with a little work, I can get it out. I may have to use a hammer as well, just to sort of get some of these boards apart. But if you're careful and you're gentle, you won't break the boards too bad. And for this star, a nice rustic look will be a nice touch. You could either leave your star rustic or you could paint it. I'm going to do both. I'm making two stars and I'm going to have one that just looks kind of rough and rustic and one I'm going to paint white and we will put some white LED lights, string lights on it. Next we need to remove any nails that remain in the boards. So I'll just back those out using a hammer. Next, I want to rip my boards down to about an inch and a half width. It doesn't have to be perfect, they just all need to be about the same size. So we're going to adjust my fence and lock it down. Now turn on my machine and carefully, very carefully, we're going to rip these boards down to about an inch and a half width. For this project, we're making a star that has five sides. Well, it doesn't really have five sides, but do you remember those stars you used to draw when you were a kid? And you just start with a piece of paper and you draw your line up, down, to the side, to the side, back down, and all together that makes five lines. And so this star is going to have that same pattern. Each of the five boards will be one line in the star. I want my star to be between 24 and 30 inches tall so that it will fit in the particular window we have in our home. Therefore, I'm going to cut each of the sides of the star to about 27 inches. The main thing is that they are all the same size. Now that we've marked each of the sides at 27 inches, we can use the chop saw to cut the sides 
to the correct length. Some people call this a miter saw. I guess that is its proper name, but I call it a chop saw because that's the simple action that it makes. It's a very handy tool to have. You know, I get a lot of joy working in my shop, making things. It's just nice to use your hands. And it gives me a lot of time to think and to pray and one of the things I often find myself thinking about is how God was a creator, a master craftsman who crafted the entire earth and the mountains and the stars and the heavens and scooped out the seas and built up the mountains and then created people. What a wonderful artist, master craftsman God is. And I often think about Jesus too, the Son of God, who is a carpenter like his father Joseph. And anytime I'm working with wood, it reminds me of Jesus and makes me think about how he must have done these same sort of things with his hands, building things, using creativity that God had given him to make something. Once we've got the star in its proper arrangement, we'll drive some screws to hold it all in place. I'm using one and a quarter inch screws that are long enough to hold everything together, but short enough that they won't go all the way through to the other side. I'm gonna put screws on each point and then I will adjust everything to make sure that it's fairly even and then I'll put screws on the inside to hold it all firmly into place. Now that all the points are patched I can adjust the width between the points and so I'm going to use a measuring tape just to kind of gauge distance between each point and try to adjust everything until it's all about even. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, just good enough that it looks right to the naked eye. Now that all the points are about equal distance apart, I'll go ahead and use some screws to tack down inside of the star, and this will hold everything in place so it won't move around. Now we can leave the star its natural wood color, which is perfectly acceptable. A nice rustic looking star has a great appeal to it. But we want a white star to wrap our white string lights on and to match the white trim of our house. So I'm going to add a few coats of white spray paint. Usually three coats of paint is sufficient. Matthew 2, verse 1 through 12. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priest and teachers of religious law and asked, Where is the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem in Judea, they said, for this is what the prophet wrote. 
And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not least among the ruling cities of Judah. For a ruler will come from you, who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. Then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time when the star first appeared. Then he told them, Go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me, so that I can go and worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went their way, and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chest and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. When it was time to leave, they returned to their own country by another route, for God had warned them in a dream not to return to Herod. So from my family to your family, I want to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Remember, God loves you and so do I.